Hi, this is Aaron for BandLab, and in this video we're going to make a disco house beat in BandLab's free online DAW. You can open this project yourself with the link in the video description, and if you find this guide useful, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be the first to know when new videos drop. I begin by setting the project tempo to 126 BPM, and I'm going to start by making a house beat. I create a new virtual instrument track and select the drums, drum pads, 909 kick instrument. I place kicks on every beat, with claps on every other beat, and open hats between the beats. I want the beat to have a funky feel, so I'm going to add a swung closed hat next. I set the view grid size to a 30 second note and add a closed hat just before the third open hat. I then duplicate this bar onto the second bar. To duplicate notes or clips in BandLab, hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows and drag them into the desired position. For the second bar, I want some swung snares. I position these just before the third kick and at the same time as the closed hat. I don't want these to be super loud, so I set their velocity level to 97. That's enough swung elements, so I return the grid size setting to smart. Next, I want to give the beat a rolling feel with some rides. I add rides on quarter notes, and again, I don't want these to be too loud, so I turn their velocity down to 85. I duplicate the two bars out to fill up the four bar MIDI clip. and add a crash symbol on the first beat. And I set the crash's velocity to 87. I'd like the drum sound to be more glued together, so I open up an effects panel and add a Dynamics Digicomp effect. I turn the ratio down to 2 to 1 to make the effect less intense. To give myself more headroom in the mix to add other instruments, I turn the track's volume down to negative 6 dB. The next element I need is a funky bass line. So I open up BandLab Sounds and enter Funk Bass into the text search field. Tom Funk 1 Bass 1 is exactly what I'm looking for, so I drag it into the project. Stylistically, this is perfect, but the timing is a little loose for a piece of electronic music. I want to tighten the timing up. I select the audio clip and put the playhead at the start of the third bar, then press S to slice the clip. I only want to use the first two bars, so I delete the audio after that. I then slice on the grid at the start of each note of the bass line. To tighten up the first note, I double click it so I can see it in the editor. I then move the handle at the bottom left hand corner of the clip to the start of the sound, then slide the clip to the left so that it's positioned on the beat. I do this with all the notes in the bass line, which gives me a much tighter sound. I then duplicate the two bar bass line out for the whole four bar pattern. I turn this track down to negative 3 dB. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I want a funky disco guitar, so I return to BandLab Sounds and search for disco guitar. Younger disco guitar, the funky strum, is ideal, so I drag it into the project. Notice that BandLab has automatically set the key of the project to A minor the key of the bass line I added earlier. BandLab has already automatically tuned the guitar loop to the correct pitch for the bass line, so when I play it back, it sounds great. It's too loud though, so I turn it down to negative 12 dB. I also add a reverb, studio reverb effect with the mix set to 4. Funk is in full effect, but I need some more emotion in there for the breakdown and drop. I want some disco keys, so I search for disco keys in BandLab Sounds. Classic Disco Keys 1 is exactly what I'm looking for, and it sounds good with the existing elements. However, the mix is getting a little muddy, so I feel like it would be a good idea to add some modulation effect to this part to make it fit around the other elements and give them more room to breathe. In the effects panel, I add a modulation little rock effect, turning the rate down to 0.5. I'd also like a little chorus, so I add a modulation stereo chorus effect, turning the rate down to 2.6. I turn this track down to negative 8 dB. I'd like another keyboard part to switch to, and Classic Disco Keys 4 is perfect. It's got the right disco feel to complement the rest of the elements, and has a touch more emotion in there, which will give the track a sense of development. I turn this track down to negative 4 dB. I'd like a high string part to complement these key parts, so I add a new instrument track and select Strings, String Orchestra. This instrument is very loud, so I turn it down to negative 18 dB. I program a simple string line that plays A, G, C, A. I'd like to give these strings a more glossy produced sound, so I add a stereo chorus. I also add a reverb, studio reverb, turning the mix down to 2.6. Before I can make an arrangement, I'm going to need some elements that'll help me transition between sections. For the first of these, I'm going to add another 909 kit track, and the reason I'm going to use an additional track is that I don't want this track to have the compression I've already added on the existing track. For this track, I create a snare drum roll that plays on 8th notes, then 16th notes, and finally 32nd notes. I also add a tom roll at the end.
To increase the volume of the snares as the track plays, I add a utility gain effect and automate it to play from around negative 8 dB up to 0 dB. By automating a gain effect rather than the overall track volume, I can set the track volume independently, and I set it to negative 6 dB. I'd also like a riser effect, so in BandLab Sounds, I search for riser and drag speeding riser into the project. I turn this down to negative 6 dB. For the arrangement, I start with just the beat, bringing the funky guitar in after 8 bars. I add just the tom roll at the end of each 16 bar section to help segue into the next part. In the second set of 16 bars, the bass line is added. Next comes the breakdown, where the guitars and keys play. Halfway through the breakdown, the strings are added. Snare roll and riser lead into the drop. On the drop, the beats and bass line kick back in. After 16 bars, I lose the strings and switch it up to the second keyboard part. After another 16 bars, the strings return. Then we return to the first keyboard part, losing the strings and guitar. For the outro, we lose the keys and then the bass, giving us a very DJ-friendly outro. You can fork this project and make your own version of it using the link in the video description. Have fun!